Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. Up and at them. It's Monday, August 26th. So, talking about trade schools versus hands-on, got a lot of you people to to not even watch the video, but also comment on it. And that's greatly appreciated. And there is a debate out there. And, you know, I talked about last week of where now we're in a... a an area of where we have nobody going to tree schools to speak of and everybody going to college and now the jobs aren't there for college or that there's too many in that pool and not a skilled tradesman and i'll tell you being a skilled 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 tradesman will make you some pretty decent money but you got to get the time and the experience and the wisdom first. You can't try to jump ahead of the crowd. So what's this morning's video on? I thought we'd go a little bit farther into this battery technology and what it means for all of us. <laughs> all right. Stay tuned. Alrighty, welcome back. My name is Eric and this is the weekday, Monday through Friday. Today is Monday, August 26th, and it's available on podcasts as well for your listening pleasures. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about battery technology. And I've talked with a few people about this. And, you know, I'm always a firm believer in it's a consumer-driven market, all right? And that is, when a consumer wants something, big tech, big, you know, corp, corporations, listen. Or unless they have ads that just keep lambasting you to... Why you shouldn't, why you should have their product, right? You know, back when I was a kid, like cereals, the big Kellogg's brands, they had so many different ones. And then you had Oscar Mayer Wiener. If I was an Oscar Mayer Wiener, right? You had all these things, and the kids were running to their parents saying, oh, we got to have it. So the parent would give in and buy it. Now, that's not a consumer-driven market. That is a corporation-driven market, which means they try to get you to buy something based on, back in those days, it was directed at kids. And the kids were the ones that convinced their parents that they had to have it, right? And it's good for you. It's healthy. It's all these other crap. And a lot of these companies, Companies didn't care if it was good for you or whatever. It, it was profits. That's what they wanted. They needed to grow. And this was the early stages, right? Ronald McDonald had the clown. You know, KFC, the old colonel. All of them had a gig of how to get the consumer to buy their products. Now, when it comes to electric battery the technology is there we've we've had the technology all right and i believe in the last 20 years it's pushed more towards a consumer driven market in that consumers are saying we don't want to pay big money for a riding lawnmower we don't want to pay big money for a push mower and these big companies, you know, like the likes of John Deere and MTD with Cub Cadet and Troy Bill and all of them, Felicity, they were all listening. So what they did was a couple of test projects, all right? 
John Deere did it with a saber. And, you know, a lot of people to this day will tell me that their saber is a John Deere. Technically not. It's actually a stamped MTD deck and chassis and motor that John Deere made a gazillion dollars off from. Because they were kind of behind the eight ball. Because they had stayed on, you know, quality workmanship, durability, last the test of time. Again, two, three generations. And when you look at two, three generations for a riding lawnmower, yeah, you might have paid three times as much. But if it lasts three times as long, you're still ahead of the game, right? But then they found that people want a new all the time. They didn't want dad's old lawnmower. They wanted their own new one. So now it made that lawnmower more costly instead of longevity. And what they did was they found that consumer-driven market was saying, we want stuff cheaper. We don't care basically the quality. We just care about the price and, you know, that it gets the job done for a couple of years. So John Deere, I mean, all the brands did it. Not just John Deere. With John Deere, you know, everybody can understand and see the, the case study. John Deere went to MTD because they were watching a lot of the other brands selling machines like crazy and theirs had slowed down. Their market dried up a little, so they were a little on the concern side. So they went to, they approached MTD about making a lawnmower specifically for them. And this wasn't John Deere's first time of going to a different supplier slash manufacturer and asking for it to be done. Because, I mean, they used errands for years for their snowblowers, the walk-behinds. And they came out with a Sabre. And they came out with a Sabre like there was two or three different brands. When I say brands, like the 38, 42... And 48 or something like that. But they sent them to their dealerships. And the dealers reported back that when they set this saber on their floor room, that 9 out of 10 customers walked to that saber and bought the saber versus the John Deere's. So it showed those companies that price was a factor. And that's where John Deere really excelled. Was that market with MTD producing those, those lawnmowers for them. Same thing with, you know, high tech and stuff. See, what we, the general trend is that if it's new and it's revolutionary that it's going to be expensive until you can get so many people involved buying it to spread the cost out and that's kind of like what ev cars are right they say a life of ev is 10 years and when they say 10 years that's the battery life and at the end of 10 years, the cost just to replace the batteries in that unit outweighs the value. And instead of holding the, somewhat of a value as it gets older, EV owners are now plagued with the older it is. People look at that and say, you know, how old is it? If it's eight years old, they're looking at maybe getting two more years tops out of that car. Where if you have a, a gas powered or a diesel powered, eight, ten years 
as long as you took care of it, we'll run another 10, 20, right? But we go back to a consumer-driven market. And back when Microsoft, Google, Amazon, all these were in their infancy, the tech giants of today versus yesterday, if you wanted to buy a computer for your house, all right, I can remember buying the first computer for us in our home when the kids were little. And the computer was like $4,500. And it consisted of a tower with a couple little floppy disks, a couple DOS games that you could play, and no memory. And we didn't have internet either. And it was stupid money. But as it started to catch on, and as the tech giants started getting their act together and being able to offer more within that system, the prices started coming down, didn't it? I mean, you can go buy a tower with a monitor with tons of storage and can do just about anything you want for under a grand. Laptop, same way. If you go with an Acer, it's under a grand. If you go with HP, it might be a little bit more. But the technology that's in that system today compared to back when I bought that first computer is phenomenal, right? So you're still getting more value for the buck. You're getting a lot more things you can do with it. And now we have the internet as far as everything catching up to it right so there was more stuff bundled with it that it became economical but it was consumers driven market consumers wanted something that they didn't have to learn dos all right and windows microsoft came out with windows and in its infancy <laughs> it was terrible I think 95 was the first year they started to kind of get their bearings. But but they didn't just start selling $1,000 units, all right? If you wanted a unit, that's what you are going to pay is $4,500 plus tax. And I did. And my jump drive, well, my, the discs kind of put more memory on it than what they could back then. And I can remember most time we spent just playing ping pong. <laughs> but the EV car is going to be the same way. You know, it took a while for Americans to start using battery-operated hand tools, right? As the quality got there, it wasn't just simply, did it work, you know, make a noise and spin, but did it accomplish the job and was it a reasonable price? Did more consumers start buying? And the more consumers that are buying, it lowers the price. And how does it lower the price? Well, if you have more people buying, it's more money being pooled for that company, then the more they can put into R&D and technology to get it better. And then as they get it better, it becomes cheaper. Just like the old DOS system to today's laptop. Most iPhones of today, I mean, you know, honestly, I thought we'd get those a lot sooner because we had, I grew up with Star Trek, you know, flipping open Captain Kirk and Spock. You know, I figured they'd be here a lot sooner. But they, they've got a technology now. And I know a lot of folks, they don't own a personal PC. They don't own a laptop. They do everything with their phone. It's all they need. It'll do anything you want it to do.
But look at the cost of what an iPhone costs today and the $4,500 unit of yesterday that had two floppy disk holders where you could put one in and copy it to the other. We used it for the farm too, but it was worthless. So that brings the hand tools where more of consumers are using them. So that means the prices are going to keep steadily coming down. There's still new technology coming out as they get batteries that last longer. Um, rechargeables. You know. But there was a time in between right interval and the ev is is in that category right now all right and that is it's stupid money for what you get and what do they got like four charging stations in new york you can plug it in your house i guess you got to have a special box installed coming off your inside fuse panel just for the plug-in. And then you want to make sure that you don't need to go too far from home because you might not get back. See, I would consider a hybrid. You know, I wouldn't... I mean, the last Chevy that I had, it was a V8, but it would get up to cruising speed and it would drop back onto four cylinders. To help with fuel economy. And, and if you press the gas to pass a car or something, the other four would come back on. And that was technology. The military had used it over in the desert for a number of years. That's where everything is tested, is, is the military. But if you give me one that's electric gas or electric diesel where I can go so long on electric flip it over to gas or diesel go so much farther and while it's going it's charging the system back up again so you're only putting fuel in it every other time I could see it being feasible what are your thoughts on it I know one thing that you know like with the batteries that we get for our lawnmowers and our vehicles and stuff like that don't last worth crap anymore. And they're the lead system. Why haven't they come out with a lithium ion battery that would run a lawnmower or a vehicle to start it? And it's the cost. My son and I were talking about that because he was telling me about the EV bay that they have specifically for EVs where they have to make sure it's all static, clear, and everything else to work on them over at the Ford garage. But he said the lithium-ion batteries aren't at that point of where it's economical to replace the lead batteries with those. Because lead is so much cheaper and it's recyclable. And I know most brands, we can't even get a year out of them in a lot more. And I know they're recycled and recycled and recycled. And I think it can only be recycled so many times and it kind of loses its pizzazz, right? I can remember younger years that a battery would last 8, 10 years. And that was leaving it in the lawnmower every year. So the technology hasn't gotten there. We saw one Cub Cadet come in the other day. And instead of having the big battery, the, the lead battery, this had a lithium. But it was the size of a motorcycle battery. And Claude looked at it and said, there's no way that this can support that size of a lawnmower but it did it did they had come out with a small lithium ion battery that would start that 
Cup Cadet Zero Turn and maintain the systems and also take the charge back. So it's here and it's coming. It's just the cost of it right now. And that's what I say when I say it's a consumer driven market. You know, back when I was younger and back when I first started buying stuff, we looked at stuff as an investment. All right. If we bought a riding lawnmower, it was not just on a whim. It was an investment that we would have over a lifetime. If we took care of it, oil changes, you know, maintenance on it. Somewhere it became with a consumer driven market. It was no longer an investment. It was short term, get rid of it, and go get another one. And in turn, we saw also the maintenance of stuff drop, where people weren't doing oil changes, regular maintenance on the equipment, treating it like an investment. I mean, if you were, I'm the youngest guy on the block here, but if you go to most of these garages or these guys, to live on the block with me. Everything to them, just like it is to me, is an investment. And you got to take care of your investment so it's going to last the test of time, right? You don't want to keep buying a lawnmower every other year. You want to buy a quality lawnmower that's going to last you 8 to 10 plus years. Are they out there? Yes, but you're going to pay bigger money john deere has got their own series of the higher end lawnmowers cub cadet has got their series simplicity has got their series you know so they're trying to manage both markets the older people like myself are still looking at i want an investment i don't want to have to replace it every other year and like the John Deere Zero Turn that I have, I bought used, and it was seven or eight years old at the time, and I put another 13 years, going on 14 when I finish this year out. Why don't I just go get a newer one, or a new one? Because this one, with regular maintenance, belts, blades, battery, greasing it, is a good investment. She's built rugged. So on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. What do you think on that idea? I mean, I think the technology is here for EVs. It's just we haven't made it cheap enough yet. And what do you do after 8 to 10 years with an EV? You think you got problems right now with recycling and stuff in landfills. I can just imagine where that's going. You know, why haven't we got that technology and batteries in lawnmowers and that stuff? Well, it's here. It's coming, and it's already started with Cub Cadet. MTD is putting the small lithiums in the Cub Cadets as a trial run. I think they need to sell the hybrids first before they try to sell the EVs. Because from what I've heard... There's a lot of EVs sitting on dealerships' yards that are not moving. That nobody wants them. And until you get enough people interested in them, it may be the best invention ever, the best idea ever. But if you can't sell the whole, the public, it's never going to materialize. So on that note, you guys have a great Monday, and I'll catch you here bright and early tomorrow morning. All right, thanks so much for watching.